if you guys have been away from the war for two years, Dr. K, a couple of years ago, I guess this has to do with Mr. Girl. Mr. Girl was a content creator who we've all had a run in with, who basically reported him to the board. And apparently after two years, they've concluded their investigation to Dr. K, finding him to be a healthy gamer. That's a joke because his name is Healthy Gamer here on YouTube. Let's go ahead and watch him talk about that process. And let's see uh, what we think. Um, as some of y'all may have seen, I was recently reprimanded by the Medical Board of Massachusetts, and I think it's really important to kind of talk about this. So the first thing to understand is that this is like really, really important. Um, we've been cooperating with a board investigation that started about two years ago. It's finally concluded. And I think that this is like a very healthy and fair way to do things. I think this is important that he's already saying it is good and healthy that he was investigated because honestly, we should want to be investigated when it's appropriate. I'm glad that it all worked out in Dr. K's favor, but this started two years ago with Mr. Girl reporting him. From my understanding, that's who this, this particular complaint is from, considering it has to do with Recful and his collaborations here on YouTube. So I know a lot of people like the work that we do and they're like, oh, my God, like this is so unfair. No, this is exactly how things are supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So about five years ago, I saw a problem with mental health. I saw a degree of AOE damage that was being done where as a clinician working in an office, I realized that like. There is no way, like the number of people who need help, we would need an army of clinicians that we don't have to try to fix this problem. The, the extent to which people are suffering and the extent that the mental health crisis that we were facing required some kind of additional innovation or s something needed to be done differently. So I started streaming. And when I started streaming, I did everything that I could to make sure that this was okay. And then what happened is someone filed a, a complaint in 2022, and this is exactly why medical boards exist, right? So medical boards exist because occasionally you'll have a doctor who tries to do something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And is this okay or is this not okay? So over two years, we've been investigated by the medical board and we've been reprimanded, but it's also important to understand what the reprimand is for, what it means, and also what it does not mean. So the reprimand is for undermining the public's faith in the profession. So in the board complaint, and what many people thought was that I was doing something wrong. So this includes everything from being negligent or in some way responsible for rectal suicide, mm. uh, that I was streaming live therapy, that I was conducting the practice of medicine on the internet with patients. So this is really important to understand. And this is the huge part about Dr. K's presence on the internet that has been under scrutiny, I suppose, is, you know, Recful was a very sick person on the internet. He'd been struggling for many, many years. And Dr. K came into his life in a very public way. And in a very public way, made a pretty big promise to him that he obviously was like, it was an over promise. And at the same time, like, Recful was already on a journey to self-destruction. He had a pretty hard childhood background. There was already an unaliving associated with his family. Uh, he was already struggling beforehand. So to say that Dr. K caused it, I think is so disingenuous to the struggle of people who suffer with mental health problems. Like it's, it's never just one thing. It's always a combination of so many things that lead us in a direction. And, you know, I think it would be unfair to blame him for Breckville's death. So I'm glad that the board didn't find him guilty of that, of course. But I understand why people were hesitant to believe that Dr. K didn't have anything to do with it. Also in regards to Dr. K doing sort of like therapy online, it is true that he gets pretty intimate with people and people tend to call it therapy and people don't know what therapy is because I do think that we think that this is therapy in the same way that people think what I do is therapy. Look, therapy is very specific and it's different in different bubbles, but what I do on the internet certainly isn't therapy, right? We're not even a psychology channel. Dr. K doesn't do therapy on the internet, though I do think because of his position as a therapist, he should be more cautious about the ways that he talks to people on the internet about their problems. Because that is sort of the issue that I think comes about just because he is a licensed doctor and all of that. That 
puts people in a position of thinking this is therapy. And look, therapy is different. You don't have to necessarily be a medical therapist. You can be a lot of different kinds of therapists. But I think that the internet is so uneducated that they think even, even when I get accused of doing therapy, like you do not know what therapy is. I couldn't even do DBT if I wanted to. Often you guys know that I, I did DBT and a lot of people are like, can you talk about it? No, I, I'm not a DBT specialist. I know nothing about it. I just did it. Just because you do something doesn't mean you can teach about it, talk about it. Like I have no way of talking about a form of therapy I did like five years ago. You know, it just feels so, I'm not sure what is up with the internet that they trust YouTubers who are randos to talk about things that are pretty serious and you should see a professional about, but I have no idea about DBT. I just did it. That's like saying, can you teach yoga because you take a yoga class? No, like, no, I cannot. Like, just because I take a yoga class doesn't mean I know anything about yoga. Like, I'm just here to be a student, okay? So I think the internet is just incredibly uneducated. And because of that, it forces them to see evil where evil doesn't exist and good where good doesn't exist. And a lot of the neurodivergent people in the internet, especially in Dr. K's audience and people who are attracted to Dr. K's work, I think their sense of justice and their lack of education in combination is just kryptonite to the truth. I think with all of like the respect, a lot of neurodivergents with a very strong sense of justice really be out here ruining people's lives because they really think they're helping people by recognizing a pattern that doesn't mean what they think it means. And I think we need to pay attention to that. And the same goes for neurotypicals, but you know, I'm glad that he's okay. But I also think it's important to recognize like the problem was that the audience went to him for all of the answers in the first place. Don't ever go to one person for all of the answers always. He says something really important in this stream that we're probably not going to get into because we're just watching him talk about the board, but what works for him won't work for you. That no matter how he speaks about the way he solved the problems in his life, they're not going to solve the problems in your life because you're not him. The board found that none of those things were true. So what this practically means is that there is a reprimand for undermining the public's faith, but also that, you know, boards have a lot of power, right? So they can do everything from fine me. They can put me on probation. They can recommend ethical training. Um, they can revoke my license. Like Jordan Peterson in Canada had to do ethical training because he said some horrible things about trans people and fat people. And so his license was under threat. And then I don't know if he ever went through with it or if he lost his license, but like Dr. or Dr. Jordan Peterson is an example. He got recommend, reprimanded by his board in Canada. So Dr. K is in America, so a Massachusetts board. And uh, yeah, I don't know if he ever went through with it or if he lost his license, but he was like, I'm not going to get indoctrinated by the indoctrination of the Canada board. And it's just like, OK, bro, relax. Since they can suspend my license, they can do all kinds of more practical consequences, but they elected to do none of those things because they found no cause to do any of those things. The other thing that the board can do is determine that what we are doing on the internet is the practice of medicine and therefore requires all these other things. They did not find that that was true as well. So we've been cooperating with the board for the last two years. I actually think it has been an eye-opening, humbling, fair, and excellent process. This is why medical boards exist. Because when there is a problem, when I show up and say, hey, I'm here to help, is what I am doing harmful in some way, helpful in some way? Where is the line? I personally feel relieved that the board has gone through everything that we've done with a fine tooth, tooth comb. And they have placed no restrictions on my license, no probation, nothing like that. And furthermore, and more importantly, no restrictions on the work that we do here. So they've, they, you know, they could have said, hey, you're, you shouldn't do interviews anymore. That's therapy. No more streaming, no more content creation. This is not allowed. This is the practice of medicine. They did not find that any of those things were actually applicable. Mm -hmm. So I'm still allowed to interview people. I'm still allowed to stream. I can make mental health content on the Internet and I can see patients without restriction. This is great news because I do think ultimately what he is doing on YouTube is not practicing what I would consider real therapy, or at least in it's not the same thing I did in my therapy. So maybe that's just me. But the form of therapy that I was seeking was different. And the relationship I had with my therapist was different. The relationship we formed, the way we did our, you know, our work together. Um, it was just like a totally different process than anything I've seen on the internet. Though there's some overlaps with energy, though you can see some things that are similar 
it's never the same. And I think it's really dangerous not to understand those nuances. You know, watching a YouTuber do physical fitness is not the same thing as having a physical trainer, right? So having somebody that works with you that you physically see in a gym is not the same thing as watching, you know, Greg Doucette make a video on how to lift and how to diet. That's not what that is. So watching a therapist on YouTube review reality TV shows like Dr. Kirkonda is not the same thing as having a relationship with a therapist. And so watching Dr. K do his streams is just not the same thing as having an actual relationship with a therapist that you pay and have a relationship with. So I just think like it's important to know that these nuances exist. What happens in the privacy of a therapy office is much more or at least should be much more different than what happens during a collaboration on a YouTube channel. I do find some of the collaborations he does with people, in my opinion, like a little uncomfortable. I don't usually watch them. Generally, though, I think that was years ago. I like the collabs he's doing now, but years ago, I couldn't watch his collaborations with people. It just felt like, I don't know, like people, well, the problem is like people clickbait everything. I think that's one of the problems I keep seeing is YouTubers keep clickbaiting things like, I went to therapy with Dr. K. And the YouTubers are doing that to sensationalize their lives to bring in views, but it also is confusing because it's not therapy. So then their audiences go, this is therapy. I, I'm really struggling with that. I actually really hate it. The one part about YouTube I do not like is that we kind of sensationalize our lives. And I, you guys know I'm so bad at sensationalizing my life, but that's because it's inappropriate. When you sensationalize, you kind of bring a lot of inappropriateness and misinformation into the sphere that I think is so unnecessary and ultimately pretty bad for our communities. Like ultimately, you're not doing therapy unless you're a therapist. I, I used to be at underground communities, as you guys know, and we would always say like, oh, this is very therapeutic. Doesn't mean it's therapy right now. And therapy is bubbled. Cool says what actually constitutes therapy. So but the, the construct around therapy is very bubbled. So personally, from Brittany's perspective, I'm only really interested in like medically approved therapy. I'm open to other forms of therapy, obviously. But I think for me, when I'm talking about things directly related to mental health, I'm interested in a program which is backed by the science and based prob like probably through academia, right? It has a credible source and a backing with the knowledge to kind of move people forward, even though I know there can be flaws in these systems, even though I know things can go wrong. I also think that it's better to have some sort of a, a a place to look to as like an authority with the with the understanding that things can be flawed. And then, of course, there's so many different kinds of therapy in the world. So I don't want to sit here and say like, oh, your form of therapy is invalid. I just want to say that what Dr. K does in therapy, like therapeutic practice as a medically licensed therapist is different than what that shaman did with Boogie when they took shrooms together. Okay. Like these are different things, you know? And so even though it feels therapeutic, it's not exactly backed with the understanding of the science. Same with the, like the differences in, you know, counselors, therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, like all these things, like everyone has a nuance to their label, but I think it's important to realize like a coach isn't a therapist. You can have a type of therapist with a title therapist that isn't board certified. You can have, so just make sure that the person you're seeing has the right credentials that make you feel reassured that you're getting the help you need. That's what I think is necessary. I think it is just as much on the client as it is on the therapist, but you as the client must make sure that the person you're seeing is giving you what you're looking for, that this is what you want. You are hiring the therapist. You get to fire therapists. You are hiring them. You are the client. You are in charge. If you don't like the service you're getting, get a new one. So that feels really good to me. Now, a lot of people may be surprised by those findings because they're like, oh my God, like this is terrible or what we do is terrible. And I think this is where it's like really important to understand that when we started streaming, we've had a continuous process of improval because we take this seriously, right? So when I started streaming, I had didn't have much of an idea of what I was doing. And then every month that goes by, every couple months that go by, we improve our process. So we have a rigorous process of onboarding, boundary setting. Um, we have oversight from a scientific advisory board. We've consulted with the American Medical Association. And keep in mind, you know, we talked yesterday about children building parasocial relationships or not understanding the situation. These are adults. Recful was an adult. Like ultimately, 
you know, Dr. K is engaging and collaborating with legal adults. And if they misunderstand what's happening in the situation, there's something to be said about that as well. Like, remember, at the end of the day, we are not talking about children. This whole conversation is centered around adult interactions. And so, you know, we go back to that idea of how can kids and adults misunderstand each other? Well, if adults are misunderstanding each other and then you bring in the element of kids, like no wonder the world is so confused. Grown up adults can't even understand that the video they're watching on YouTube isn't therapy. They can't even understand the collaborations they're doing aren't therapy or, or at least like even if you want to brand it that way, like you can't even accurately observe what you're seeing. And maybe that's why here. Oh, and I have to make a correction. OK, I have a correction I have to make because, well, I'll just I'll say it. I'll say it now. I just I, I'll say it because I'll forget it. I said Kamala Harris went to Harvard. She didn't. I don't know why I thought that when I Googled. She went to Howard. Shout out to Howard University. But she didn't go to Harvard. So in my video, when you watch it, the video I made about that, just replace Harvard with, with Howard. My bad. It like literally egged at my brain all morning. I put a pinned comment on it. Like there's so much misinformation on the internet and I fucking contributed to it and I'm pissed at myself. But you know, as long as we correct ourselves, we can move forward. But I did spread misinformation by saying she went to Harvard because I don't know why I thought that was true. When I Googled it, I was, I Googled it again. And I like reread what I read and I was like, how did I do that? Is my dyslexia that bad? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sorry I did that. And it just ate at me all morning. And I was like, I can't believe I did that. And then on top of it, I'm a grown up. Why did I make that mistake? Why did I make it? Because humans are flawed. I had no intention of misrepresenting what school she went to, but somehow I did it. And I was like, how did I do that? And the same way all of us are misunderstanding each other constantly and is spreading misinformation and doing all of these things. So, okay, Dr. K is doing his best and I truly think he has good intentions. And I think that's really important. Association, the American Psychiatric Association, and we will continue to improve our process. I think because our process is so rigorous, this is why the board had no recommendations on what we should do differently and no restrictions on what we already do. So we take this really seriously and it is absolutely relieving to have someone go through all of the information and basically say, there's nothing better that you can be doing right now. We have no recommendations. So this is awesome, right? And furthermore, no restrictions. The other thing that sometimes surprises people is that, you know, a lot of people thought that I was negligent with recful and all this kind of stuff. And this is where the board actually outlines this very clearly that I operated within standard guidelines. There's no evidence of negligence or malpractice or anything like that. Now, this may surprise people because they're like, oh, my God, what I did was so bad. But, I, you know, I'm going to say this. I've said it before, but I'll, I'll kind of say it again. So one of the challenges of this situation is that because someone has a right to privacy, I cannot share everything that I know about the situation, right? So people made allegations and like in order to defend myself, I have to violate someone's privacy and I'm not going to do that. I'll never do that. The good news, the relieving thing for me is that with the medical board, the, the right to privacy, because they are a medical board, they reviewed a lot of records, things like that, right? They can look at patient information and they are allowed to make a determination after they've looked through all of the information. And I don't even blame people for thinking negatively about me, right? Because you guys didn't have all the information and you can't ever get all the information. I can't give you the information. It's just not possible. And that's okay, right? So that's, it's part of what being a content creator is. So... I think this is a really important, healthy process. This is what oversight looks like, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. This is what we need. This is him also saying that we trust our institutions to be thorough and good when coming to conclusions, which won't always be perfect. But I agree that the process in some ways should give the right results, should yield the right results, right? And I think this was the right result. I think Mr. Girl's initial allegations against Dr. K were inappropriate and honestly, a lot of projection. I think that Mr. Girl's like heightened sense of justice or whatever is going on in his brain, you know, was just highly inappropriate. Um, I think he has fine insight on whatever might actually be correct, but I think most of his conclusions were really bad as a thinker. 
And I think he just he, he attempted to destroy a lot of people's lives because he thought better than everyone else, which his heightened sense of what I would call narcissism, not like NPD, but, you know, narcissist ego is just the core sort of like his sense of justice and his narcissism really made him feel really justified in this. And look, resources and things went into this, took two years and then boom, boom, here we are at the result. Now the question is, will, will he accept it? I don't know. I don't even know what Mr. Girl is doing with his life. I have no idea what this man is doing with his life. I don't even know if he's on the internet. Is he even on YouTube anymore? I don't know. But Dr. K is, and that's kind of what matters need to be safe is for someone to go through it's totally fine to complain and then the board goes through everything and they make a determination i think it's been an incredibly fair process i'm personally relieved and i'm like actually really happy that i continue to do everything that i've been doing right no restrictions on my license or content creation so i showed up here five years ago to help and i will continue to do so in the same ways that i have been I will also continue, and we as an organization, because this is the other thing to understand, is that this goes way beyond me, right? We have a scientific advisory board. We have, um, you know, a, even an ethicist on the sci scientific advisory board. We have a content team. We have an onboarding team. We have a research team. We have a compliance team, right, to make sure that everything that we're doing is in compliance with all the laws and regulations. And once again, no findings of a lack of compliance with anything. And in some ways, Dr. K isn't just a YouTuber because of this, right? Like in so many ways, like... He's not just a YouTuber because of all of these things, right? So people do assume they put him on a pedestal, right? And they look at him and they say, well, it's Dr. K, so he knows. He knows what he knows. Even therapists can dispute differences. Look, if Jordan Peterson and Dr. K are both in the same field and they would differ very much on ideas, we have to keep that in mind, right? Dr. Kirkonda, Jordan Peterson, Dr. K, they're all in, you know, adjacent fields, same fields. Like we have to be aware that they're all different in their own different ways, right? But they're, they all have very different opinions on life. So we have to take that with a grain of salt too. Biases and prejudice infiltrate science and medicine all of the time, all of the time, which is why, again, I think, having this idea in our heads that like, oh, because it's Western medicine, it's the right kind of medicine. It's like the right kind of medicine is the right kind of medicine, Western, Eastern, whatever. If it works, it works. And what we're really looking for is things that work and for different people, because one size doesn't fit all, period. Thing that we do, right? So that's like really important to understand. And, and like, we will continue to improve. So just because the board did not find any faults with our process does not mean that we are not listening to your feedback, does not mean that we are not listening to your criticism, does not mean that we are doing a perfect job and that we can't do better. Mm -hmm. So overall, this has been like, honestly, it's been eye opening, humbling, mm. but I've really, I think it's a very healthy thing. This is the way that things work in the world, right? When you, you try to do something new. Occasionally, we need a third party that is objective that is going to look at everything that you. Exactly. That's going to look at everything and really go into it and see what else do we need to improve upon. Do and determine what you are doing right and what you are doing wrong. I'm actually incredibly grateful to the board. I know some people have been like, oh, my God, there's no no like that. They're doing their job. Right. It's their job to make sure that I'm not doing something uh, out of line or whatever. And then they take my license away if I am. Like, that's what they're supposed to do. And so I'm just really grateful to everyone who's been helpful to us, everyone who's given us feedback on what we could be doing better, everyone who's helped us create the processes that keep people safe in the work that we do. I'm, I'm grateful to everyone for all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I'm even grateful to the American Medical Association and American Psychiatric Association for weighing in in what way they could in our processes for our attorneys and everyone mm -hmm, else. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to y'all for allowing us to do this work. Right. So we showed up five years ago to help. And I think we've done some help in that time and we're we'll continue to do so. And I think that's the most important thing is that we don't need to change actually like a single thing about our process. Everything that we've been doing or I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but the, 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 the only thing he was reprimanded about was the branding. Not a big deal. Just change some tactics. Basically. The only thing he did wrong was sort of the vibes. Okay, so we change the vibes. We make it more digestible for the public. No problem. 
because the only thing he did wrong was make people doubt the credibility of the organization. Okay. So that's a branding mistake. That's not a moral or ethical mistake, right? The board made no recommendations on restrictions to right. practice or... So he doesn't have to change anything he's doing. Basically, just like polish up the brand. Any of the content or interviews that we do. So I'm sure that this isn't the end of it. Um, you, you know, like I, I think that this is... We have like posts to cover today. So I think it's important to kind of honor those. And at the same time, like this is, you know, I think it's important. Like we got to address this in some way. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really grateful to everyone for allowing me to do this work. The medical board included, y'all included, right? I don't get to do this work unless the rest of the world decides that it's okay. Mm. I love that on, on a Friday in the middle of the day, my job is to talk to the internet about feeling tired and ADHD and, you know, being below average IQ and how do you function in the world? Like it's an absolute privilege to do this work. Um, it is absolutely important to do this work. Because I still think that like what is happening right now is insufficient to the, the systems in place are insufficient to support our mental health. I agree. And we see piles and piles and piles of evidence to that effect. Yeah. Right. Suicide rates are on the rise. Depression mm -hmm. is on the rise. Anxiety is on the rise. Technology addiction is on the rise. Loneliness is on the rise. Touch starvation is on the rise. Mm -hmm. Right. Thankfully, we have a lot of other institutions that are aware of these problems and trying to do something about the, the office of the U.S. Surgeon General, the World Health Organization, the United Nations. A lot of people are trying to do something about this. And this is the small slice that I have chosen to try to help. The and I'm going to say this again. Look at your lives. Look at Mr. Girl's life and look at these people who go after Dr. K Look at their lives and tell me that that's the life you want. Because no offense, I'd rather have a Dr. K life. Okay? At the end of the day, look at the people trying to take Dr. K down and to ask yourself, would I want to be like them? Absolutely not. Even the people that doubt his Eastern medicine um, influence or his religious background or the fact that he's brown or anything else, look at those people and ask yourself, would you want their life? And that if you do, go be in that bubble, okay? Because a lot of those people are living lives I would not want no matter how much you paid me, okay? So people are trying to help, but other people will try to get in the way because they think they know better. Watch out for those people. This problem. You know, I, I hope to continue to do so. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I feel privileged that I will continue to be able to do this work essentially in the same way that we have been. I'm not uh, saying that, you know, this is like, I will have a license to do this for the next 30 years. Like we're going to continue to make process improvements, right? There's always, you can always do better. And that's like part of what we do here at HG is like continual process improvement. It's part of the reason that our content does well. It's part of the reason that our coaching program does well. And by the way, the board looked at all that stuff too. Um, so I'm, I'm really grateful for this opportunity, really grateful to y'all for being here, allowing us to do this work. We're grateful to y'all for posting on the subreddit about the challenges that you face, asking questions, posting memes, all this other stuff. Like we're grateful for all of it. All right. And uh, five years ago, I showed up on the Internet to try to help this problem. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, after the conclusion of this board process, I will continue to do so in roughly the same manner. Right. Period. Okay, that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about there. Look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think everyone's trying to help in their own ways, but some people's ways are just better. Okay? I see you trying to help. I think if you look at your own life and if people lived your life, they'd be more miserable. And I think if people lived my life, they'd be better. But not my life always. Just if you fit in that category. There are some people that are living a life that would be good for no one. There are some people that are living a life that would be good for somebody. My life is very good for some people, not for all people. So if you're in my category of person, you might want to take note. If you're in a different category of person, what are they doing? When I see a really devout Muslim who has a very healthy relationship with their religion, I think to myself, oh, who could this benefit? Definitely people that are probably Muslim. They're going to need good leaders. Okay, I might not be religious, but they are. When I see a devout Catholic or a devout somebody and they're really living a healthy life in their religion, and even though I don't believe in religion, that's going to help somebody. 
But if you're looking at somebody who's not following the tenets of their religion, who are constantly doing the wrong things, who are constantly miserable, who are constantly lost, maybe don't mimic their actions. Maybe don't. And at the same time, learn from them. At the same time, you know, see where they're going wrong and maybe see where they're going right. The idea is like people are just people, guys, and no one is truly the knower of all things. No one is truly the greatest of us all. Everyone is just trying their best. And sometimes their best is, you know, <laughs> and it's still their best all the same. <sighs> I think sometimes we just pedestal people. We put people on too big, like just too big of an act. Like we expect so much of people and we would never expect that out of ourselves. We just never would expect that out of ourselves. I think it is so unfair to ask the world to do something you can't do yourself in so many ways. And at the same time, of course, we have expectations of different people because they also take on the burden of those responsibilities by taking on certain things like being in the mental health field. I understand. I understand they're held to, what do they say, a higher standard. I don't know if that's really true, that certain jobs hold you to a higher standard so much as we convince ourselves that human beings without those jobs shouldn't be held to high standards, when in reality, maybe we should all be held to higher standards. Or maybe not, since higher standards are also a construct. Who knows? So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.